Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 34. In this episode, we're going to be talking about membership with a focus around non-profits and associations. There's a lot of overlap um, with a membership site that you might be looking to build, plus what these type of organisations might want. Um, we're going to go through the broad things that you need to know if you are helping a non-profit or you're part of association, which will apply to your own membership site. I've got my great co-host. He seems very chirpy. He seems ready for this discussion. I have the only unique Spencer Foreman. So, Spencer, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners sure. and viewers? Sure. It's Spence from WPLaunchify.com or SpencerForeman.com. No E in Foreman. Happy to be here. Hard to believe it's 34 episodes. Uh, very grateful to be in the very sunny, uh, looking up month of June versus, <laughs> like to forget it, May of 2023. And uh, today is a topic that it should apply to a lot of folks who are involved with either clients or themselves running nonprofits because the set of tools you need or want to use is oftentimes much simpler than you imagine. And I have to say the number one thing that I help people focus on fixing or fixing for them, which is in your territory, is we're in a world where WordPress as a service is a small stack of Lego blocks or IKEA furniture rather than going to the flea market. And I think people are really surprised once they have an honest conversation or hear from things like this, that they've been overthinking it and trying to put too many complicated things together. So today we'll bring some clarity to it. Yeah, there's definitely that. I totally agree with you there. There's definitely a trend that I'm seeing is you have business objectives uh, as individual entrepreneur, as a small organization, large organizations that are critical. Um and you have others that are wish list, but you really got to control because you really can go totally bonkers with WordPress, can't you? It's it's great, one of its great strengths, but it's one of its drawbacks. You can really, really go bonkers, can't you? Yeah, or or with third party stuff. I mean, you know, the conversations that I have on a daily basis, which really make it easier for me to solve people's problems, is that there's a common thread. And again, I'm not pointing a finger like somebody did something wrong, but the, the common thread is that WordPress came about in a way that it was not soon enough turned into a WAS-like uh, solution, which is to say, here's the stuff you can do, and this is how to do it. Instead, it was left open to the makers, which many of us have been here since the beginning, we did our best. But whenever you leave things open to makers and tinkerers, you don't get a unified solution, which it's wonderful if your customers want to be tinkerers, but most customers don't. Most customers are companies or business owners who are just like, can I have a solution that works? And it's sort of metaphorically like a car. There's very few times you go into a car dealership and they go, here, here's your brand new Chrysler Cordoba. It's in parts. Have fun assembling the parts. They just give you a car ready to drive. And I think that's the clarity that we can bring to this. You don't need a lot of parts. You don't need a lot of complex things anymore. That's fantastic. And before we go into the meat and potatoes of this great show, I've got a couple of messages from, my, from the show's major sponsors. We will be back in a few moments, folks. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. Coming back, folks, I just want to point out that a couple of the major sponsors have got some great special offers. Plus, we offer a curated list of the best WordPress plugins for you if you're looking to build a membership website. Um, we'll save you a load of time crawling the internet. They're all top-notch solutions to Pacific things that you will want to be sold. To find all these goodies, all you have to do is go over to wp-tonic.com slash deals. wp 
um, tonic.com slash deals and you find all the goodies there and they're free what more could you ask for uh, um so i wrote out some key points here um so we're talking about um non-profits non-profits or and associations um when it comes to non-profits donations are the driver of a non-profit the blood the blood that must be pumped you know obviously you've got the calls the focus but without donations it's probably not going to be able to achieve what the non-profit wants so what are some of the when it comes to taking donations through your website what are some of the things that you've come across that you feel a non-profit has to understand and some of the key stumbling blocks that you've come across in your many years of consulting such organizations right well all right so let's talk about the primary benefits or purposes of a solution like this versus old-fashioned ways essentially a nonprofit or somebody who's taking donations because it could be a difference by the way i mean legally a nonprofit organization in the united states is one that's registered under the federal tax laws as something like a 501 c3 entity or maybe there's a different version of it they're allowed to take money and the money that comes in is not taxed in the same way as if they were a private company or a corporation or an individual sole proprietor and they have to abide by certain reporting rules and there's lots of details that they have to provide why is that different that's different than merely taking donations because like anybody can take donations but then you have to account for it right like i can have a hockey club or i can have a jujitsu membership site that says hey support me give me money for whatever wordpress survived on buy me a cup of coffee <laughs> donations for developers for years so the issue what it boils down to is assuming you're going to take money for the company what level of reporting what level of accounting what level of uh, responsibility is there for the money as it comes in because if it's something that doesn't really entail a 501c3 there's not a lot of reason to spend a whole bunch of effort on where did the money come from? You can just have a big bucket that, you know, ring the bell and people put money into, and it's just like any other income source, right? That's just going into your gross income, and that's the end of the day. And this will become important because as we talk about the solutions, there's plenty of easy ways to take money with using a Stripe gateway, PayPal gateway, using WooCommerce, using another plugin, using a Forms plugin. But there's really one main leader in the donation area and that's that give wp plugin which we'll talk about so if your primary business requires the details and reporting and like accountability then that's the probable reason you'd want to bother using that otherwise just use one of the other solutions we'll talk about and that keeps things super simple because there's a few examples of ways where literally you just go to a page you, <laughs> you say how much you want to give and then check out with stripe or paypal and done a lot of non-profits are very sensitive in the cut that Stripe wants to take, that um, that PayPal or, or Stripe or or any of the gateways um, want. You know, I think I am correct in saying Stripe's two point nine. They're all the same, though. They're all they're. Uh, hold on, are you saying? I want to understand. Everybody's sensitive to it, but you can't. You know, you can't go through a toll booth without paying the toll. There's no way I'm aware of through any gateway that you pay less than 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction, unless or until you start doing a huge volume, in which case you can negotiate something less. Or you go through some private vendor who has their own gateway, but then there's a trade off for that as well. So, like the general tollway everybody pays to go through is 2.9 cents, uh, sorry, 2.9% plus 30 cents on every transaction. That's the average. Right, yeah. You know, so um, I think the other thing is these organizations, they have, um, they rely to communication through email marketing and effective email marketing and communicating to their donors or supporters or through their membership of the association is crucial. So um, what are some of your insights when it comes to what WordPress can offer such organizations when it comes to email 
marketing? For the email marketing, um, I mean, you know, that's where it's agnostic to the purpose of the organization, right? So I'm a big proponent of having as a first choice using email marketing inside of the site using Fluent CRM. And when I say marketing, I should more properly say marketing automation because email marketing by itself is static. But if you don't have it connected to marketing automation where you're tracking each individual user's journey and what they've done, seen, bought, clicked, whatever, it's blind, right? Like email marketing was always around, but you didn't really know what people did other than open an email, click a link in an email. With marketing automation, you can see their entire journey through your sales funnel, through your offers, through your site, through your whatever. So in a general sense, no matter what your organization is, having that basic stack of stuff, right? You have uh, a CRM of, bless you, a CRM of your choice, but let's say Fluent CRM is a plugin. WP Fusion, which connects the CRM to the rest of the ecosystem of plugins and the page builders and so forth. And then you have some way by which you're offering, let's say, a donation capability, and you can track that somebody has done this or paid this and so forth. I suggest, like we'll talk about, I do it oftentimes with uh, WooCommerce and launch flows, but you can do that with Fluent Forms. You could do that with Gravity Forms. You could do that with, of course, the specialty plugin of GiveWP, depending on how much reporting you need. Either way, you now see each person as they come to your site, if they do things like give you money, and you have a dossier that can allow you to market to them in a follow up email. Hey, big donor. <laughs> hey, hey you know, tight wad, whatever, like either you've given me lots of money or you should give me money, but you know that based upon tracking their journey, tracking what they've actually done. And that's a system that is no longer complex if you start with a kit versus trying to piece together lots of SaaS products as you would have had to do in the past. Are there any specific about volumes because um, medium size um, nonprofits or associations can be um, sending out a lot of email. Are there any specific, based on your experience, specific things that associations and nonprofits got to keep in mind when it comes to utilizing something like Fluent CRM? Yeah. So let's start out with the concept of like email being sent through an SMTP versus email being sent through a CRM service. If you use a SaaS service, uh, HubSpot, Infusionsoft, uh, ConvertKit, and so forth, right? Salesforce, the, the active campaign, the benefit of their bargain, the cost that they charge you, which now has become very, very expensive, very, very expensive. Like they're taking advantage of customers now, if you ask me, especially like active campaign, which has always been an A plus rating for us at WP Fusion. They like more than double their price. I think in some cases, like, septuple their price like five times four or five times they've just some people went from like a little bit per month to like holy crap what's going on here if you choose a SaaS service they're always going to offer you two things the marketing automation part and the email sending part smtp if you go with a plug-in solution like a fluent crm the advantage you have is you can connect to any smtp service and that's a beautiful thing. So when I start people out with a business that has no customers, no donors, I say, look, the easiest way to do it is you could start out with a free Gmail or a $6 a month um, Google Workspace account with your own domain. And even in the free or the limited Google Workspace account, you can do, uh, depending on which one you have, you could do up to 2,000 emails a day <laughs> just by using that as the outbound email and using Fluent SMTP inside the site to track the user's journey and to create the emails and so forth. And as you grow, you can go to a more powerful service. Like let's say you do want to send more than 2000 emails a day because your list is 5,000 people. Great. Fluent, for example, lets the list grow for free, but you just need a SendGrid or Mailgun or Amazon SES. You have to attach some um, elastic email, something that allows you to send a larger number of emails as the organization grows. And the cost is nominal. For example, like SendGrid, which is very easy, uh, they charge $19 for 100,000 emails. If you go to Elastic Email, it's $10 for 100,000 emails. God bless you if you're sending more than 100,000 emails. So like for as little as 10 or 20 bucks a month, you can pretty much grow your business into anything you want. But avoid, if you wish, if you can, if you follow my advice, avoid the unnecessary leap to using a SaaS CRM before you've tried something like 
this stack with Fluent CRM, WP Fusion, Launch Flows, WooCommerce. Because using that stack, you own it, you control it, you have no costs as your list grows, other than the actual things you send. Um, have you come across? Um, um, are there any kind of drawbacks using Fluent CRM? Um, I've I've recently been part of. Um, group Zooms where other people have been utilizing another uh, WordPress-based CRM email mark automation platform, and they've been saying they've been having a lot of performance problems. Um, yeah, with do, which do, one? I don't really want to name it, actually. No, no, which one is that they're having – what are they saying they had problems with? Fluent? Um, not, not with Fluent, no. It was a, another one. And they were saying that it – um, I'm trying to remember what the precise thing. They, the, I think they were saying that the the email um, it was utilizing a, a lot of server resources and that. Have you heard these comments and have you got yeah. any insight what that is about? Yeah, I actually heard a good example of this this morning, and actually the good reason why what I'm suggesting is a better way to go. Okay. First of all, without specifying the particular plugin in WordPress for the CRM or the marketing automation emails, let's talk about just in general SaaS companies. There's 55, 57 well-known ones, but the big names we all have heard of, Salesforce, Infusionsoft, HubSpot, Entreport, Drip, you know, now it's ConvertKit and so forth, right? You are getting in a gilded cage with your business, relying on them to essentially take a huge part of the responsibility of how your business works onto their servers, onto their non-accessible to you servers. So Entreport, Drip, Active Campaign, they have a bad day, you have a bad day. They decide like now to change prices, kick you off, do stuff to you, good luck. You have made a deal, you're in a marriage with them and your business is with them. It's nonsense to think that their hardware, their services are any different than what you have accessible. Why? Because as we just talked about, there's two components to any of these CRM SaaS companies. There's the email sending component and there's the marketing automation component. They charge you for the marketing automation component, which is just on their servers. I mean, they use the same cloud hardware that's available to any of us, right? Many of them just use Amazon S3 and stuff like that if they don't use like a Kubernetes cloud or something. The second thing is SMTP. Guess what? They use the same goddamn SMTP relays as the rest of us because there's only a limited number of SMTP trusted relays in the world. That's how emails get out today. So there's been multiple instances where SaaS companies, like even an active campaign, especially Entreport, and definitely uh, uh, like some of the big ones. Now, I mean, you don't hear about it as a Salesforce, but you say like Infusionsoft Keep. They just have a bad day and shit breaks. Now, go back to WordPress. Remember, we've talked endlessly, endlessly about how there is no standardized way for hosts to provide the services to their clients and how I keep beating the drum, and I won't mention names. There are certain companies that provide non cash performance-based VPS hosting that also can include access to things like doing your own custom cron jobs, which is important because cron jobs are like the heartbeat of marketing automation. If you've got an automation that says check somebody's thing every two minutes and then do this and this and this. If you set it up on some janky server with caching and the cron job is in your WordPress install, it might miss that moment where it's supposed to do something and trigger the automation versus a properly set up host that doesn't do that where there's no such problem. Second of all, some people cheap themselves out on what they pay for for SMTP services and they go with some rinky dink I'm going to use PHP emailer in my web host and send out 2,000 emails, and they're su surprised it doesn't work. But here's what is the best part. For the Fluent SMTP, Shah Jahan Jewel, today was an example. Because I'm at the level of working with the code and with the guys and the, the women that are making this stuff, there was a recent update to one of their products, Fluent Forms, which is a nice hand-in-hand -hand with what we're talking about because... It was very radical, did some cool things. But WP Fusion, which is essential as a partner into that, hadn't yet seen the changes. And so there's like something where in certain situations, the, the new forms thing tripped before WP Fusion knew about it and it wasn't catching the automations. Unlike a SaaS company where you would 
spray and pray and hope somebody responds. Somebody just got on the marketing automation Facebook group, said, hey, this is a problem. Shah Jahan gets on there. Jack gets on there. I get on there. Somebody gets on there. And they go, here's the solution. It's a snippet. And by the way, we're going to update the plugin later today. Done. Because everybody is talking about WordPress as a, like a feature where they know what the other hand is doing. And so if there was any real truth to like, this doesn't work, I mean, it, beyond the geeky geeky, it would be immediately solved. In reality, though, what happens is people don't set things up properly. People use third-party janky stuff, and then they get the results like, you know, we've been talking about for 18 years of a Frankenstein monster. But it's very rarely because of the Fluent or the plugin itself. There are one other th situation. Uh, in the launch flow space with sales funnels, if you're doing, let's say, somebody buys a product, gives you donation, what happens is there's five or six other sales funnel plugins that are in WordPress that all are trying to be frameworks and they're trying to do marketing automation as well. And what's happening there, as I've warned in other shows, is be careful what you wish for. Because they're taking on all of these obligations instead of just sticking with the basics of like, I'm making a sales funnel happen. And in doing so, shit breaks as well. And performance issues happen. And unlike the situation we just discussed, there's not first-person accountability. Because we know there's a certain chocolate factory that makes a lot of chocolate. And they could give two shits about like being that responsive when it comes to something breaking because there's no name or face that you can have show up in a Facebook group. That person doesn't do that. So that's what I warn people about. Be careful what you use in your recipe. Buy your car from a reputable dealer and know what parts are in it. So just to recap, because we did go, um, you know, if you're listening to this, we try and keep it to a reasonable level but we are in this show prepared to go real tech as well so i think what you're saying just to recap is go with fluent crm look at wp fusion as well go with um, either send grid or we do have two to three really large clients that we've had to set them up with amazon web services email platform because we're talking about hundreds of thousands of email per month you know, uh, half a million, a million plus emails yeah. per month. And there's quite a few loops, but I found Amazon for the big, for the bigger clients pretty good. Have your experience? Because um, it's either we, we supply. I find, no, I find no difference other than what you said being 100% true. If, if you got like a few friends and you're going for a ride, rent a four passenger convertible. If you're taking a school full of children, you got to rent a few buses. If you're taking a college of kids, you have to rent a fleet of buses. Get the service that matches the state of your business and the volume of emails you're sending. Amazon SES is fine. It is not a panacea. SendGrid, Elastic Email, Mailgun, all those other ones do exactly the same thing. And I found no significant difference in the deliverability. The difference comes in the setup complexity and the amount of pre preparatory hassle it is a pain in the ass to get approved for amazon ses whereas with let's say SendGrid or elastic email you just go over there pay the money and you immediately are up and running and that's that but you do have to pay proportional to what you're trying to do and they allow you to do that i mean there's no scaling they just pay more you know as you send more and it's so cheap too i mean like i said 10 bucks 20 bucks I don't care how big your company is. You're going to, that's going to cover your basic SMTP costs. And it'll also do your transactional stuff on WordPress too. So like it's a reliability and a tracking capability that you get for a very small amount of money. But uh, you're right about the other part, which is the number one problem that I have is people have the sunken cost fallacy or a C-suite person in an enterprise who knows nothing about the current state of technology or WordPress who's making decisions like somebody told me at a golf outing that you should use this thing from 10 years ago. And it's that sort of like somebody told me you should hook your horse up to the back of your Tesla. You know, like, no, don't ride a horse or drive a gas car anymore. Just get the Tesla. The Tesla or whatever electric car has these modern parts. Similarly, unless you already have a relationship with HubSpot or Salesforce and Infusionsoft and you've got a built-in million reasons why you're using it outside of WordPress, just start with Fluent inside of your stack and you'll immediately see that you can grow it with no problems. You know what I mean? Like just abandon preconceived notions. And when I do speak with people, which is, you know, four to six a day, that's like 99% of where they've been appreciative of like nobody bothered to just tell me that. 
because it's not like on the front page of WordPress.org. Here, by the way, is WordPress as a service. It's so simple. So they get lost in the flea market and bad advice, which was well-intentioned, but still out of date. You know what I mean? Like bad advice, like something that was good 10 years ago is definitely not good today. Now, on to another point. Um, we speak, I speak to some organizations that are looking for the marketing automation side, but they also are looking for a CRM, which is going to be their digital organizational hub. Um, now, I don't think um, on the SaaS side, I don't think Active Campaign. There are quite a few organisations that utilise Active Campaign not only for their email and automation, but also for their digital hub. I don't think it's really designed for that, in my personal opinion, and I don't actually think Fluent CRM was designed to be your digital hub. Hopefully you're following what I mean by digital hub. I do, um, but I, I feel that's an interesting conversation point for us, by the yeah. way, which is there's a fallacy, a fallacy, a fallacy. Same unfortunate, I, I actually posted in Twitter yesterday like a great article that came off of uh, one of my email lists about why bad software gets created it's because there's in many corporate environments or large organizations like nonprofit there's three layers there's the well-intentioned but uninformed c-suite people there's the middle managers and there's the people who are tasked with like putting the stuff together and every day i see this where the c-suite people don't know better but they heard this thing and they order the middle manager people to go use this thing and tell the developers to make that happen and the developers like i don't want to do anything to risk my job so i'll just do whatever you tell me to do and it's it's garbage in garbage out now <laughs> every time this happens i have to like like take them in like go through a therapy session deprogram them and show them Salesforce, for 99% of businesses that run everything they sell or do off of WordPress, has no purpose. HubSpot has no purpose. Infusionsoft has no purpose. If you're a company that uses those things outside of WordPress, you have a reason to keep using them. In other words, I have companies that run automobile sales where Salesforce drives all their everything about their inventory. Okay, for you using Salesforce is the right thing for marketing automation on your WordPress site if you're offering some things there. But for most of the companies, they don't need a digital hub in the CRM. What they need is just a website on WordPress that has everything, including a dashboard and a hub, as one thing. And it was only because they got hypnotized by somebody thinking that the SaaS CRMs are offering the, the, the point of single truth versus it being on WordPress, that they go with that as their uh, initial inception. And I'm saying, no, if you started today, nine out of 10 companies could just have a WordPress site with Fluent CRM with a custom dashboard using WooCommerce and so forth that showed everything about their business and more. And if you really wanted more information, you could use a great plugin or a service, I should say, called Metoric which allows you to connect the API of WooCommerce directly to that and spit out these amazing dashboards about churn rate and onboarding and you know conversion and so forth. And in doing it that way, most companies become fully bulletproof for the future because what they didn't realize, in fact, I have two of these clients right now, they spent $100,000 with teams of people trying to turn Salesforce into the singular source of truth of their business as a hub yeah. And they're trying to pull stuff out of WooCommerce and this and that and this and that and this and to put it in Salesforce. And I keep saying to them, why? <laughs> if you open a browser and there's a custom page inside a WordPress built with the very same tools that shows you everything about your business, what's the difference if that's your WordPress page versus the Salesforce page? Because the data you need in Salesforce will still be there for marketing automation, but the sales and the membership and the management and the content and all the rest will be in WordPress. So that's my answer. That's a long answer. But stop thinking WordPress is just a CMS and start thinking is WordPress being the planet and the CRM is just like the moon that orbits the planet for marketing automation. And then everything becomes easier. I, I totally see where you're coming from. And I would agree that there is a high percentage of organizations that feel that a kind of um, centralized hub will solve all their problems. And um, if you go 
listen, um, there's a few YouTube channels where there's consultants that talk about um, CRMs for medium to large organisations. I listen to these channels, right. and they say that um, you you need you need to study um, because one particular CRM is um, its history is from manufacturing. Um, um, it, its focus is not suitable for your type of organisation. So you, th there's a lot in this and you can choose the wrong solution quite quickly and spend a lot of money. But there are, I do agree with you, but where I, I kind of um, slightly disagree with you are that there's, there are definitely in, when it comes to associations and non-profits, they, they are a, a suite of um, SaaS-based solutions in the non-profit and also in the association space. Um, one of them in the association space is Wild Apricot. Um, they really market a all-embracing Swiss Army knife type of solution. Um, can get very expensive very quickly, like all these SaaS solutions. Obviously, Salesforce offer a for a non-profit in tax terms, they offer a, a specific product product for that type of non-profit. That, that's the fallacy of it all. And you know what you're saying isn't false, but like the the old saying to every carpenter with a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Mm -hmm. These CRMs, the SaaS CRMs, have armies of salespeople and spend yeah. Enormous sums of money marketing the concept that their product is singularly solving everyone's problems. But when we step back for a moment and kind of go back to, let's say, comparing what does an organization need? If a non for profit needs to give control to access, have directories of members, have a membership site, if they need a WordPress site and the features that can be delivered. That immediately puts the red flag up as to why something like a wild apricot is not a good solution. Because as soon as they choose that, they give up all of the other things that they could be getting as an all-in-one, right? If you went with a GiveWP or a WP Fusion WooCommerce launch flows on a WordPress website, you could have all of the features you want and more without paying an exorbitant amount for a specialty platform that locks you out from that other than using weird APIs and stuff to, to move people around. The second thing is on the marketing. I mean, let's just be honest. There's 8 trillion sodas or 8 billion different ways, of, you know, hairbrushes or whatever. If you're a big company like Infusionsoft or HubSpot or Salesforce, I mean, you have millions of dollars on marketing to say why, your thing is a magic trick that nobody has. But that's just not true because we have WordPress, which runs half of the gosh darn internet. <laughs> and every possible feature they have or can dream of, we have in some way or another. Now, it may not be 100% fleshed out in one plugin, but there's not yet been a situation of any way, uh, shape, or form that we could not do in WordPress that's over there. And that's the trick, isn't it? The trick is like, what are you going to build with? Are you going to carve a bunch of things out of wood? Or are you going to snap together Lego blocks and own and control it? Now, just to finish off the first half of the show, Spencer, what is the situation with WordPress integrating with financial um, packages? Because um, these organizations, based on my experience, are driven by um, getting more donors or getting more members for the association and keeping um, offering value to either their supporters or their members and reducing churn of membership or churn of people not donating. Um, and that's controlled by the chief financial officer and to some degree and the, and the CEO of the of the non-profit or the or the um, association, so they want they want integration with their financial packages, which is quick. A lot of them utilise some uh, some of the ones that we have worked with. One of my biggest bigger clients, they actually built, which they deeply regret. They ha they had on staff a, a, a coder, and they built 
a internal financial monitoring subscription into which has been a pain in the posterior for um for years um, um so quickbooks is what is the situation at the present moment i'm just taking quickbooks let's just take quickbooks as an example what is the situation of integrating a, a wordpress space um website um, using fluency i am using give wp with something like quickbooks based on your experience well let me first suggest how i think i'm not an accountant i am a licensed attorney and i have other degrees and licenses i'm not but i can say from a business standpoint and a trained bookkeeper a person who represented a bookkeeper organization people make a mistake on where they need to take the data for tax purposes from the standpoint of the, at least the United States, I, I don't know what happens in the EU. <laughs> They're probably crawling around your house. I've heard it's worse. The VAT guys are worse than the IRS guys, but never. They, are. they are. I can tell you, being English, the, uh, they combined the British version of the internal revenue. There used to be two separate departments, the, the VAT and the British version of the internal revenue. But they combine the two now into one organization and it makes it makes the internal uh, American internal revenue service look like sweethearts. Yeah. I mean, I remember I'm a Beatles fan, everything from the song Taxman all the way to my friends in Britain in the 90s. They were having the vans driving around looking to see if you had TVs because they had a TV tax. So yes. they were literally like scanning. They your still house. do. They still do. Scanning your house for TVs. Yeah. They, right. they are some of the most aggressive debt collectors. The BBC has become some of the most aggressive debt collecting organizations I mean, in Britain. It's like Oliver Twist. Okay, so in the United States, at least, the IRS has certain categories of items that are income items, deductible expense items. At the end of the day, there is absolutely no reason for any organization to be taking information about gross sales or products for the purposes of bookkeeping or accounting yes for the purposes of like membership and satisfaction and marketing understand who bought what when where and why and if they stayed or not but for income tax purposes all that matters is what was your gross income what was the cost of goods sold what were your deductible expenses that information does not or should not come from WooCommerce or GiveWP. It should not come from the transactional engine part. Quite frankly, I don't even know if it should come from the gateway. So many of us use Stripe or PayPal. So WooCommerce connects to Stripe. Somebody pays me money for a product or a subscription, it goes to Stripe. There is a way I could connect WooCommerce to QuickBooks or another product. Yes, can called. you, does it, you know, what, does it work? Because uh, I, yes, I, know, I, I know what you're saying, but I also know talking to chief financial officers, they're going to say, no, I want it well, to I'll, 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 I'll give you the three examples of it and why they're wrong and I'm right. If you connect WooCommerce to QuickBooks, okay, you end up with an unholy mess. Here's why. I have a product in WooCommerce. Let's say I'm selling through Stripe. We talked at the beginning of the show that the Stripe takes a non-refundable to you fee of 2.9% and 30 cents for the transaction. In the last couple of years, every gateway has become militant about they're not giving you, the site owner, back the money, even if you refund the person immediately. So I sell a membership for $100, okay? There's roughly, let's round it off to like 3, 3%, three bucks goes to Stripe for a fee. I gross $97. Person's like, ah, Spence, this thing sucks. I want a refund. I'm like, sure, no problem. I got a 30-day money-back guarantee. I give them back $100 because I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to get bad customer goodwill by keeping the $3 fee. That's like going to hurt me. So now I've got a WooCommerce transaction and a refund, and there's a fee going out to a gateway and now I have to figure out, think about all that data. <laughs> like I took money, there was a fee given to somebody, and then I refunded it. I'm negative $3, but there's three parts to that. Very complex. Every single thing that I do with a person has to now be sent to zero or QuickBooks. 
where not a single piece of that information is relevant anymore. Why? Because <laughs> all I have is $3 that is not a deductible cost of doing business. It's a $3, maybe it's a marketing fee, maybe it's a service fee, but it's not like a gross income thing. It's not a tax line item that has anything to do with my taxes, other than maybe it reduces my gross income a little bit. But all that data, just to get to the bottom line, Let's say instead of taking the transaction data connected from WooCommerce to zero, I go with the Stripe gateway. Okay. Stripe allows you to connect directly to like zero, gets you a little closer because now you can look at Stripe and run a report that says, what's my net income? Okay. That's not a bad way to go, but it's still complex because there's still all kinds of extra data from Stripe about the customers. The IRS doesn't need a list of your customers. The accountant and the bookkeeper don't need a list of your customers. They just need how much money you made, how much money you spent, how much it costs to sell the stuff. So that's still complicated. Well, what about the fact that Stripe or PayPal connect to my bank? You know, like once the money is held for a day, it gets dumped to my bank. Now that's actually where it starts to get to be in the right spot. If I have a bank account that's dedicated to my Stripe connection and the money goes into that, guess what? That immediately tells my bookkeeper and accountant a verified number of what I actually ended up taking is gross income, right? Because that number is right there. This is yeah, I just want to clarify. I think what you're saying, um, I'm the kind of devil's advocate for the listeners and viewers. What I think you're saying is, I see where you're coming from now. I think what you're saying is yeah, there's a place, obviously accountancy, financials are important for your obligations for tax reasons but a lot of it to some extent is the wrong focus a lot of it can be figures just for the sake of figures where knowing the um where you're getting drop off where people are not signing up for a uh, association subscription or not going to a donation page and then dropping off is important. So, but you've got to find a happy balance. That's why you need somebody to consult with and somebody that understands. And I think what you're trying to say is a lot of organisation, they don't look at the right data and then that they want to be inundated with data that won't actually help them. I think that's well, what well, here's the bottom line. Bottom line for myself, for my clients, for enterprise clients. The only thing that matters to the bookkeeper, the CPA, or the IRS is the money that gets deposited in the bank account. That's it. Because if you think about like what we just talked about, cost of goods sold and the expense of making the net profit are all just taken out before the money gets dumped into the bank account. And if you have a bank account that's connected to the Stripe or PayPal gateway, the, the net amount that ends up there is essentially your, your profit that is part of declaring on taxes. And nothing else along the way of that transaction is relevant to anything for tax purposes because the, the cost of the initial goods sold and the, the net profit came out before the money got dumped into the bank. Once it's in the bank, that's the only figure that matters. Now, if you have computers and cars and an office and rent, those are things that are totally separate from every transaction of a membership site. So my advice is this whole part of the conversation is a waste of time other than to say, just attach your bank account to your QuickBooks or your Zero, and that's where the intra, uh, the information should come from. Do not try to connect it to WooCommerce. Do not try to connect it even to the gateway because all the other data you're going to get is just wasted, wasted. Huh. I mean, for tax purposes. Oh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to go for our break, folks. We've had a big dive. Hopefully, you got some value. Um, in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking about some specific WordPress solutions for um, to build your non-profit or association website on WordPress. Hopefully, I'm sure you're going to find it useful. We will be back in a few moments, folks. Coming back, folks. I just want to take the opportunity, if you're looking to host your WordPress membership website for as an individual entrepreneur, for a non-profit, for association, why don't you look at partnering with WP Tonic? We we offer superb 
focused hosting for that type of solution, plus email marketing, a suite of plugins, plus knowledgeable support in one great package. Go over to WP Tonic, have a look at what we got to offer. You can also book a free consultation with me, um, and we'll see if we're a good fit. We'd love you to choose us as your partner. So um, off we go. So um, you're looking to build, you've had enough of the clutches of the SaaS um, solutions or embracing solutions, or you're looking um, to revamp your WordPress website, um, and it's 2023, and you um, you got volunteers, or you want to find out what maybe are the best solutions before you go to a regional or city digital agency. Um, so, um, based on um, at what we've been discussing over the weeks, um, I think. Um, it's either Elevator or it's Gutenberg, and um, I think to uh, I'm trying to find the right words here, Spence, because I don't want to upset anybody, um, which is <laughs> impossible. Uh, um, I, I personally think that if I was starting f from fresh, I would go with Gutenberg, but I, it would be with Cadence WP, and if uh, I'm this type of organisation, I think they could afford the pro version, uh, um, and I that would be the main technology tool that I would utilise to build out my website. Um, what's your own thoughts about that? About which part of it, though? Um, Utilising Cadence WP. You know, the conversation I have is like redundant, but it's true that we've reached the stage where there's more than enough components that somebody can experiment with, right? You can build anything you want. But the downside is for all the reasons I said today, and I say almost every show, and that's WordPress as a service, is that I feel like I finally achieved the place where I've got a stack of tools that is evergreen enough to stick with, and therefore I can make content instructions, automation, simplify things, because things don't change. And I'll use the metaphor of, again, Legos or Ikea furniture. I love Ikea furniture, and I raise my kids on all kinds of stuff. I used to build houses for a living, and we'd use Ikea stuff. Whether it's 20 years ago or today, virtually anything you buy in Ikea will work with something that was bought in Ikea over the last decades. Same with Legos. You literally could take an 80-year-old Lego block, and it'll work with a Lego kit from today. That builds stability into people and their businesses, whereas if you are constantly tinkering, constantly following the shiny ball of look at this new page builder look at this new thing you get what you deserve and admittedly i love doing that i mean every day i'm experimenting with new stuff but there's two columns okay there's people who want to tinker and learn and do cool stuff you know experimental there's people who just want a solution and if you think of any other platform there's no other platform SaaS platform where every day people are given a choice of oh we're, you're on salesforce you know today you can just change the uh the checkout tool and use this and today you can change the page builder and do that they don't do that they would never be able to build a business that way they have features and then people say i would like to request a feature i would like to change a feature i would like to modify what you do and people think about it at the back end and maybe someday the developers add that feature in or tweak it and they announce to the public hey look we made this new thing you can move uh, you know, a period, two sentences over, like, oh, amazing. Whereas in WordPress, people are conditioned to the idea, like, go on into the kitchen and start cooking your own meal at the restaurant. <laughs> and w when did that ever work out for anybody? So that's the point of cadence for me, is that of all the various stacks of stuff, we talked about a few other options. I like the, the look and the feel, the stability, the power, the feature set, but I don't use all of it, of using cadence WooCommerce, WooCommerce subscriptions, launch flows, WP Fusion, Learn Dash, Lifter, whatever. And that stack of stuff, that's it, carries the day. I can deliver in two clicks to a customer a solution. And if the customer wants to do more, we build on that stack without throwing in the kitchen sink of random variables. And that's it. Yeah. And then, you know, tinker away all you want in the tinker world. But yeah, I've got uh, uh, the. Um... The developer team behind Cadence, the uh, the main founder, 
Um, I've yeah. got um, yeah, Ben. I've got total confidence in him and his ability and his team's ability. And I, I think at the present moment they are finding the right balance between functionality, consistency, and still being um, not backward. Um, and I've got uh, they've shown they've shown consistency in being able to choose the right balance. So um, on to the next one. Um, give WP um, Devon and um, he's a personal friend. Got absolute confidence in him and his team. He's been promoted higher in Fluent um, in um, Liquid Web or. or um, um, I mean, it's ironic, but it's nice that the, the Matt and Devon and everybody else all ended up at the same place where Cadences and all the rest and Learn Dash. So. I'm not saying that there's like anything to do with us or by design, but like also when you look at the stack that happens to be there, aside from the hosting, I'm not recommending the hosting part, but like the, the software part, those are the components that there you go. You know what I mean? Like you've got everything in like one company, one sensibility. And even if they don't necessarily. They're solid. That's what they are. Solid. I don't know about the name, but like the sensibilities and the politics. And I think the underlying ethics of the people is different than some other companies we know about. Yeah, they and give WP. They recently introduced more integration w with Salesforce, and the Salesforce really aimed at nonprofits. Um, I don't take this the wrong way because I totally agreed with what you you outlined in the first half, and it is a lot to do with sales teams and and the messaging. But there is a, unfortunately, Spencer. There's a lot of non-profits and association that have, re they you cannot persuade them off. They want a WordPress integration with Salesforce. That's what they want, and you can't wane them off it, Spence. I'm not sure I understand um, the question because isn't that what we do with WP Fusion? Yeah, yeah. Um, like but I'm that's just, that, that's. That's the essence of what we've been talking about. Is like you don't need to think about it. Just use WP Fusion. Done. Like a good majority of our enterprise clients are just that. They have Salesforce, WordPress. There are the things that we talked about, which are C-suite decisions that make no sense, but you can tell them, you know, where the water is. You can't make them drink, and you're like, okay, since I told you and it's on the record, we'll do it your way. And in fact, I have a customer like that right now. Like I said, a hundred thousand dollars in the Salesforce expert. <laughs> Has come to me many times on the side and said, "Well, the, we we had a flat tire on the project and the bus is on the side of the road. Why? Well, because they re they realized like Salesforce can't be the single source of truth for all this stuff, and now we have to rethink it." I'm like, "You mean exactly like we talked about in those ten meetings before?" Yeah. Well, that's the point. You can't teach people who are C-suite people how to think logically because their brains aren't wired for it. They're on the golf course. They're on their yachts. They're on their the vacations telling the middle managers to tell the developers to do stuff that makes no sense. That's how the world works. Sorry. You know, mm. look, look right. at Twitter. Now, um, I also think WP, especially on the non, the non-profit, the donation-driven, it does offer, you know, Devin and his team, um, they had deep connections with the non-profit, um, um, I'm looking for the right word, community. Um, so it's got a lot of functionality that's aimed at the non-profit um, usability. On to the next one. We, I think we, you know, I think we both agree um, with the next one we're going to discuss that fluent CRM. If you're looking for marketing optimization, it's the clear winner, as far as I'm concerned. Great founder, great team, great communication, and it does the job. Would I think you're not? Going to disagree with what I've just outlined. I had a conversation with a prospective customer or curiosity seeker who is well versed in the various plugins. And there's another plugin for CRM capability who we've discussed. We won't say the name, but like the reason that I don't talk about that is because at a certain point in time, they decided, and that's their business, they wanted to have a business that was a platform yeah. rather than a feature. And the platform means it has a lot of components and features built in, but their pricing model and their subscription model and their interjection model is such that somebody has to like essentially be talking to their servers in order to make your stuff work. 
and they're, all the features and everything else are sold as an a la carte monthly subscription. And if you stop doing that, that's it. You're done. Whereas Fluent isn't that way. Fluent is the purest WordPress open source. And it tries to do one thing really well, along with maybe a few complementary other plugins, like the Forms plugin, yeah. the SMTP. Now, I told this other person who I think is very successful and very energetic, and I wish them nothing but good. I can't recommend or talk about your product because it's going against everything else that I'm trying to accomplish with my work in WordPress. And so from that standpoint, I say that that is the benefit of Fluent CRM as a baseline starting point. Nine out of 10 of my customers, no matter how big, realize Fluent does everything they want, whether they have zero customers or a million people on their list. And the, very few of them have ever said, oh, Fluent just can't do what I need. I got to leave. And it keeps improving, too. So why not start with the base? And then you can always add a bigger Lego block on top of it. But it's not going to necessarily be that other plugin. It might be that they need to connect Salesforce or something. Who knows? But you can't go wrong with it in the stack. because it's, Retail price is $90 if you buy the license. It's zero if you get it as part of a relationship with you know, people like you and I. Why not just start with that, right? And get things running out the door. On to the next quality solution, um, quality founder. Um, you're, you have a lot of connection with them. Um, WP Fusion. And the thing, I think it, um, because of the tagging, uh, we've discussed this in another episode, folks. Do go and listen to some of our previous discussions. Is that it, it puts um, Fluent CRM on steroids. It, it's tagging function and it makes your ability to, if you decide to move to another vendor it make so you you can avoid being blackmailed by any vendor because it's an intermediate technology and it offers other benefits as well so i'm talking about wp fusion um obviously i'm presuming you're gonna say great things about wp because it is great isn't it well i'm i'm deeply involved with jack and wp fusion i have since it's going in five years since his early days of the plugin. And so I think that what's happened over time, and again, there's a great team there as well. It's mm -hmm. Ace and a couple, one or two other people, but a small team. Jack is like really running this as a first person business. Um, Jack and I, as of this morning, we're discussing some new things that we're going to do in collaboration because like the conversation with Shah Jahan Jewel and so forth, there's a very small number of plugins with the exception of the WordPress stuff, uh, sorry, with the exception of the WooCommerce stuff where it's, first name basis like old school developers that are all like look we're finally at the place where our features together make a bigger thing happening and wp fusion is definitely the glue the velcro the usb cable that connects the features in wordpress with whatever your crm is there i'm really surprised by that there is no other plugin that does what it does there's some that do some of the things that do like automator wp and you know the zapier integromats but there's none that does exactly what wp fusion does and i attribute that to jack and to his focus and also to the fact that the way the wordpress ecosystem has evolved is a lot about politics and and gamesmanship and like who's trusted and he is an impeccable person mm -hmm. and whereas i might be more aggressive and a marketer and like you know speak my mind He's very low key and stick to the, the, the business of running and making that plugin better. And so that's awesome. It is an essential part of every single site, every single site. And that's because unless you know what journey people are on with a CRM connected to WordPress, you really don't know anything today. You know, Google Analytics 4.0, goddamn, is not going to tell you anything because first of all, it's broken beyond repair. But even Google Analytics 3, it was some anonymous person did something on your site, maybe, you know. Whereas with marketing automation, there's Jonathan Denwood back browsing that page, buying that thing again, you know, and so forth. Yeah. On to uh, another one. Obviously, um, if you're using Fluent CRM, and we highly recommend um, they have their Fluent form and Fluent CRM, but I am on my list recommending another because if you're building solutions for nonprofits and for association, it is still, um, when it comes to Quasar semi-customization, the leader because of all the third-party integrations. And that's Gravity Forms. Um, I, I would still list it because of legacy and it does 
at a certain level that when you're looking at Quasar custom integration does offer a lot of flexibility. So that's why I've included it. What's mm -hmm. your own thoughts about Gravity Forms? Another quality company, I would say. Yeah, Carl Hancock, OG, he still runs the company and the company is, you know, I, he, I like, he's got a very David Freed, I don't want to attribute him, but like, you know, uh, from 37 Signals, he's got a very, a Jason Freed, not David Freed, sorry, Jason Freed mindset where he's like very opinionated in a logical way, very hands-on, still runs the company. And he's constantly discussing, you know, what can be better, but at the same time, he's not chasing trends. So I like Gravity Forms. We have a ton of customers that use it. We still since the beginning have been a paid, you know, unlimited user or whatever. I don't know. I paid like $8 instead of whatever it is. A great value. However, I will say if you were starting out from scratch and you didn't have complex needs, you don't necessarily need to jump over to Gravity right. Forms. One of the things about Fluent Forms that I like is that it's so deeply integrated with yeah. a lot of features to Fluent CRM that I kind of, that's the decision tree I say. I say, do you already have Gravity Forms? Okay, you can keep using it because that deeply integrates with WP Fusion anyway. But if you don't have it, you might as well just start with Fluent Form yeah. because it's like, again, lesser number of makers of the pieces that all work in the Lego system. Yeah, uh, that would be my position. Now, when it comes to SEO plugin, you know, obviously Yoast is traditionally, um, I've got no problems with Yoast, but I would not recommend it. Uh, on never, the movie, no, never, on the never, ever, never, um, never. Never. <laughs> um, I want to we, can, we can talk about that, by the way. Let's let's pick on Yoast in particular. No, I don't actually want to do that, actually. Well, let's, wanna... let's just say it why I'm saying it. And then there's a good question here that I'm posted. In well, the, the, oh. let me say something, and then I'll, I'll let you go. You, you know, um, the reason is um, Yoast, um, it, it's CEO. It's CEO it, she's a fabulous lady. I really like her. I've interviewed her. Uh, um, this is uh, the company, not the people we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but I think uh, we've we've mentioned, I think it has its place, you know, who owns the company, who runs it, their, their ethos. Um, uh, but I think there was some problems with Yoast about um, doing updates and not really testing them, and there was other things. That, and it's clearly, I don't think it's clearly the best solution now. Over to you, Spencer. Okay. The reason I don't use Yoast, I wouldn't use Yoast, has nothing to do with Yoast himself, his wife, his, his brother that used to be the COO who retired or whatever. None of that. Or the fine people who work there. It has to do with they broke all the rules in the software, and they continue to break all the rules in the software. So they use their position and standing and strength in the marketplace to get away with crap that no other developers would get away with. And they were unresponsive in a way it was like belligerent which demonstrated itself outside of the software, which we don't need to talk about. But in the software itself, like there were several occasions, several, where they would like put billboards in the middle of all the stuff or phone home stuff or, you know, break your whatever. The, the worst part about it is like their silent way that the free plugin generates 301 redirections without telling you. And you put in Yoast or a client puts it in and all of a sudden they change a page URL and all hell breaks loose and you have no reason why because you have to pay for the premium version to find out why. Bullshit like that. And there's another company who does that as well that we talked about at the, the Chocolate Factory. I don't use their plugin because there's infinite numbers of better free, even paid SEO plugins that don't put in all that crap. And as we've learned today, SEO plugins are not a first line necessity for most of the people starting out with this. You can add it later because we've already seen Google has thrown its hands up and given up to AI and the modern way that the search things are going to change. So we're in a transitional period. So yeah. anything to do with SEO, I wouldn't even bother with at the moment. But if I did, I could definitely recommend any of the lightweight or free SEO plugins. Nothing to do with the human beings or attacking their personalities. No, well, I wasn't. Was it? I was saying really nice things about the CEO. Okay. As, as far as the, there's a good question here from Tala or a comment. Why do people think that WordPress is just a mere simple app, like a platform that anyone can use to create a professional website? Why do they not give WordPress developer the due credit who works on WordPress with advanced and professional understanding that not any other can do? Now, this is a great question, and it's exemplifying the very comment that I keep saying or the very point I keep making about WordPress as a service 
when WordPress started, and Tala, you look much younger than I do because you don't have gray hair yet. Uh, the, the point is when WordPress first started, it was a few of us around the campfire and Matt made us all believe that it would be like Tom Sawyer and he handed out paintbrushes and paint and said, look how fun it will be to paint the fence for free. And we all did. And years went by and it was like, holy crap, like we're actually running all these websites and making all this stuff and everybody's buying stuff for more than donating us a cup of coffee. But here's where the problem started. And that's where the problem is just today. Along the way, Matt set himself up with venture capital and created WordPress.com and Automatic. And he went off and made deals with people who are real business people who are like, yeah, we're going to take all that painted fence stuff and turn it into a real business model. And you guys keep working for free over there, keep fixing stuff, making stuff and whatever. And up until recently, it worked. But a few actors in the .org side of things started to get power and strength and consolidate and do stuff and made it really clear that the rules weren't fair, that some of the kids painting the fence were drinking lemonade and watching movies while the rest of us were doing the work. And so here we are today where if you go to WordPress.org or WordPress in general as a customer, Matt and his cohorts have made it clear that they want there to be a confusing flea market of anybody can do anything, make anything they want. Because the net result is that the customers get confused and guess who wins? The people with the largest marketing budget to capture them or attract the attention and draw them in. Now that up until recently has only been automatic or the bigger hosting companies and so forth. But as of late, we're seeing now it's the smaller hosting companies. Now it's some of the software consolidation companies. So when you have a customer, you need to give them an alternative and you have to say, look, I'm not selling you the software. I'm not selling you the platform. What I'm selling you is a concierge experience to essentially put parts together that you couldn't figure out on your own into a solution. But stop trying to sell them on your development skills. As a developer, I don't sell myself as a developer. I sell myself as a person who says, I'm going to be like the concierge who knows all the best restaurants in town, and I'll just take care of you, right? And you do that in your business as well. And you know what? People don't give a shit because nobody can tell the difference between whether you, you swear it. you must be. I know. I'm so I mean, ever since, I, ever since my surgery, I think nobody cares whether you coded it, whether you had open AI coded for you, or whether you have a plugin you snap together. They only care about what shows up on their dashboard or their screen. And as somebody who develops, I find this interesting because. I don't see the business of WordPress continuing as it has been. It's not going to be a bunch of little singular developers making their stuff anymore and selling it. It's going to be large companies that make yeah, this case, stuff. We can discuss this with the well, it has to do, we it can, has to we, do we with can have, point. We, we can have after hours discussion. When yeah, we but just like, let's, let me wrap it up with one sentence. As it comes to do with the point of the show, which is like non-for-profits, Non-for-profits fall victim to this all the time. Hmm. They get in the hands of somebody who calls themselves a WordPress developer. I'm not saying that's what Tal is. He may be very qualified as a true developer. But it's somebody who, oh, I used WordPress once. I'm a WordPress developer, right? And they end up going on Theme Forest or getting some plugin from 10 years ago, and they do a little spaghetti code in the snippets plugin, and they deliver this Frankenstein monster. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the organization, including the person running it, is left with a disaster who thinks like WordPress is a piece of shit or WordPress developers are a piece of shit or whatever. And it's because, it's because there's no top-down solution that makes sense. Whereas you go to Salesforce. Somebody on Salesforce could be a Salesforce certified consultant. And all they do is use Salesforce out of the box, but they charge $2,500 an hour. And the person gets the result they want. Why? Because Salesforce doesn't let anybody break the platform. They don't let them stick in crazy Frankenstein stuff, and it keeps them from making a bad experience for the customer. And that's what my point is. If we can control WordPress from the top yeah, down, is. even at a personal level. Uh -huh. you know. All right, yeah. Um, so we're going to finish off now, folks. I so switched to caffeinated coffee yeah, today. Yeah, something switched on. Uh, um, so, um, Spencer, how can people find out more about I'll you? be at the... I'll be at the European coffee shop all day drinking espressos, obviously. You know, the thing is, Jonathan, I couldn't exercise for a month. I was in great pain. And then I got past that. And now I'm up to my normal exercise. It's sunny. All my children are away, even my adult children. I have nothing but time and feeling healthy again and exercise and a lot of espresso. So they can find me at... <laughs> 
<laughs> WPLaunchify.com or SpencerForman.com. My social handle is S-P-E-N-C-E-R. F-O-R-M-A-N. I also want to let you know that there are some things happening in my relationships with like WP Fusion and otherwise because WordPress as a service is what everybody needs, what everybody wants. Not the tinkerers, but the end users. So whether you're an implementer or an end user, somebody who's just like, look, I need the right answer. Come have a free call with me. I'll give to you free, <laughs> use as much as you want. Here's all the software. Here's the demo. I hand people the final solution. You know why? Because when I hand them the solution, it's like letting them drive the brand new car. They drive the car like, this is amazing. Where have you been all my life? Can I work with you? And that's what people ultimately benefit from. It's like, now we've got the tool. Let's start talking about what we're going to do with the tool instead of tinkering and building the tool. That's great. We're going to wrap da, 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 da. it up. We're going to wrap it up now, folks. We're probably going to continue the discussion a little bit um, after hours, which you'll be able to see on the YouTube channel and um, live if you join us live or on Twitter or Facebook, where LinkedIn, wherever we're pushing this. But for the podcast part of the show, we're going to wrap it up now. We'll we're here see- just to entertain, like. Rushali and two woofs, which is a great YouTube name. Face yeah. purple crying. We're here for the, you know, subscribe yep. now. Click the subscribe and like button. Yep. So, um, so we're going to wrap it up now, folks. We see you next week with another great discussion that will help you build a great membership website for you, your community, for your family. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. So let's continue the discussion just for a few minutes and um, like I say, I call it after hours. Um, so like, I, I think Taha, um, his point, I think it's fright. Um, I think if he's still with us, um, I think it's just framing. I just, I think it's linked to what you, you said about Matt and about WordPress. Um, it, this idea that something's free and you can build it all free, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll simplify one other thing. Imagine you went to a restaurant where you could walk in the back and start cooking your own food. If all the customers at a restaurant could, if they wanted, "Eh, I'll go in the kitchen and make my own lunch. Imagine how they would perceive the restaurant versus like one of those fancy, you know, hoity toity, New, new whatever restaurants where they bring you out like a little plate with a potato chip and a little dab of sour cream and an egg and it's like $20 for this you know it's marketing and perception because people can touch and play with WordPress they they think somehow they can do it and it cheapens the experience but what I found is that when you stop talking about WordPress and you just talk about the solution I charge 300 an hour with impunity and people don't even flinch I charge $5,000 to retain me just to ask questions and maybe three, four, five hours of actual work with them because what they want is the relationship with somebody who knows how to go in and out of these systems, these tools, and ultimately what they want is somebody who can deliver them the foundation that's bulletproof, they can rely on, that five minutes later, like we talked about, they're not going to have to pull the bus over to the side of the road and start over again after having spent tens of thousands of dollars. So if you change the shift of your marketing, you will find that there's an infinite array of customers. But don't be, I'm a WordPress developer. Take the word WordPress out of that and say, I'm a solutions provider. And by the way, don't tell anybody you're actually using WordPress. It's an amazing difference in the outcome. So um, when it comes to active, you know, um, I did a video about active campaign compared to Infusionsoft. And obviously, if you're looking at the SaaS plat, a SaaS solution, obviously, Active Campaign is a clear winner to infu- even keep. I know they've improved the UX, but I just wouldn't, I just in all conscience wouldn't be happy recommending Infusionsoft, Infusion, Confusion, or keep uh, compared to Active Campaign, but I think you're saying that Active Campaign is getting very expensive. They shit the bed. They they disappointingly shit the bed. Um, I don't know what's going on with Active Campaign. I have a feeling it had to do with probably private investment or equity or something because it reminds me a lot of some other companies in preparation for IPOs or investment or whatever. They're just like. Let's push all the deadbeats out. Not being that these people aren't paying money, but they're like, let's see who, you know, let's push until people jump. Hmm. And their pricing just went 
out of control lately and their service hasn't changed substantially and there's no justification in the cost of the services because it wasn't like the SES or the A3 or whatever uh, SW3 stuff that they're using has changed in cost. So that was disappointing, I think, for a lot of people who had invested in the concept. And again, the service, the product was really good, still is. But like here, I'm looking at their pricing plan. So if you go monthly for active campaign, oh, this is weird. Hold on one second. This can't be right. No, hold on one second. I gotta go to active campaign. So if you go to active campaigns pricing and you're doing monthly, they do it based upon users, but let me just, let's just do a comparison like from a fluent standpoint. And by the way, it's also worthy of note, like we talked about in last show, you don't have to wait for the back and forth communication of the API and the, the webhook. You have fluent is in the dashboard. But if you're looking at just like uh, their base pricing and they've changed it slightly here because now they have these like columns. If you're doing the marketing, which is a combination of the email and the marketing automation, Five, you, five users, which you don't need. Uh, and I don't even know what the number is. With the, There's a limit on, hold on, how many sending you can send. Is starting at $149 a month. But there's a sliding cost scale here. Because as you uh, add more people onto your list, it goes up. So if we go over to transactional email, you pay... Um, additional for each mail that you send per month obviously like 10,000 emails 15 so the bottom line is that you're not going to really get anything of consequence there for less than a buck and a half a month just to get started and then as you do more you're going to pay more like as more people are on your list you're going to pay more um that was significantly different because i think when they started you could get into it for tens of dollars yeah. you know what i mean like functionally you could get into it for like 29 dollars a month or something and now it's like 150 dollars a month i mean to get the basic features of, of fluent fluent you pay if you buy the license it's 90 dollars most of the time sometimes it's 120 depending on the time of year and that's it you you just put a billion people on there and it doesn't make any difference and so whatever i I think there was at least two or three instances as well where Active Campaign had moments where their servers were having trouble with sending and so forth. So they're not immune to that either, mm. like we talked about in the beginning of the show. Um, um, just to quickly finish off, what happened, what what about Drip? Because is that is its focus really just around e-commerce and offering with like Shopify? Is because um, it seemed after its founder sold, who's a personal yeah. friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, um, Robin, Robin, the, um, basically, um, I don't hear too much of it. Um, uh, is its focus around e commerce now? No, what happened was Rob, who again, great human being, I love when we get to talk on the show. He and his wife Sherry have amazing other things. He's so busy, I love it, but he does, you know, he, he's got his, um, Entrepreneur summits and the other things that he's writing, microconf, micro yeah, microconf, and so forth. He's producing tons of content regularly, but he's got a great sensibility. He's a family guy. Okay, there was a guy Clay Collins who ran Lead Pages, to whom Drip got sold, and Lead Pages was one of the early people in the market who made sales pages possible. Like before, all this was able to be done with the tools we use now. Drip had a really, really innovative way of doing stuff that now is pretty standard and it still exists. But quite frankly, it's, it's like one of those businesses that never died. It just went off. They hit like last I looked, it had, I don't know, tens of thousands of users. And Rob had his life changing moment, well deserved that he can move on to other stuff and, you know, sold the business. To my understanding from his own words, once his time was up with like what he was obligated to do, he left active involvement with that and he's doing his own thing. Um, I looked up because I was curious, where's Clay Collins? He took, you know, millions of dollars of VC money. Lead pages still exist. Strips still exist. I just don't hear much about it. I don't think mm. much about it. And it doesn't. It doesn't have any compelling new developments. Like I'm going to look at one thing in our CRM compatibility chart. Drip has the four key features. We give it an A plus. We give it an A plus at WP Fusion. So if Drip's sensibilities, their marketing, whatever it makes sense to you, it would be a good alternative for you. But it's not getting the attention, for example, 
of what Nathan Berry's doing at ConvertKit lately. Now, ConvertKit doesn't do anything with WP Fusion yet, but they're trying, as we talked about in a previous show, they're trying to put all the WordPress features into ConvertKit, right? So instead of com being compatible API to other things, they're trying to be like, so there's different reasons why you might look at stuff. Yeah. Just to finish off, because I know I know you've got things to do, but I just thought to take this opportunity. What's your thoughts about HubSpot? Because it's a company hugely successful, hugely mm -hmm. profitable, but I've always found it a bit of a puzzle myself. I've all it's I I like to think that I'm not the sharpest tool, but I'm not the bluntest either. Um but I could never will really fundamentally totally work out this is their success or is it they just offered their marketing automation and functionality with other key aspects that Salesforce couldn't offer and it was just um it offered that marketing automation that Zello Zoom that um and a slightly more price um, value than what sells false and that that was the key to their success what's your own thoughts there first mover advantage who didn't drive the truck off of a cliff so there was a, a day in the early parts of wordpress where there was only a few games in town there was salesforce infusionsoft and hubspot hubspot originally had a couple founders one of whom i remember a guy named david cancel who somehow got smushed out of the business or there was some like HubSpot almost died an early death because there was some politics and problems and other stuff. But because they were there early days, and unlike Clayton Mask, who took private equity and regretted it every day since, which is what drove Infusionsoft out of its market leader position, there was a time when, like, to even talk to uh, Infusionsoft, you had to pay 2500 bucks just to get them to let you use their stuff. I mean, big, big cojones, right? Since HubSpot didn't do that, and HubSpot, I think, went upstream to a certain degree towards the Salesforce market, because Salesforce was truly enterprise and still is, they captured those SMB, small to medium-sized businesses who, like, listen, I'm not going to use a $50 a month product, but I can't afford Salesforce. Like, what else you got in the middle? And they put in a bunch of stuff that at the moment in time was not available in WordPress, was not available otherwise, and they built this aura, this teams of high pressure salespeople, which still exists. Now, I'm going to give you an example of why I hate HubSpot. Hate them. Their, <laughs> pro their, their product, no, here's why. Their product checks all the boxes with WP Fusion, right? But their product sucks on some basic things. For example, it's 2023. And with HubSpot, they don't have a difference between lists and tags. All right. I mean, it's 2023, and this is what MailChimp did too. In HubSpot, to properly keep track of a user's journey, you want everybody to be in one bucket. One company should have like a main list, and then you segment based on tags. HubSpot doesn't have tags, so you have to do this game where they're all in one list, and then you add them to other lists. And there's a difference between a static list and a dynamic list. And it's mind-blowing for a product that here's the, the worst part. The second thing I hate. They're dishonest and disingenuous about pricing because they have different games they play with different people in different calls depending on what they can get away with. So if you're just a nobody and don't know any better, you, you don't just get like offered retail pricing. You get offered like, oh, it's free to start. But then as soon as you put five people, five people in, <laughs> it goes up to like 30 or 100. And then the next jump's like 1600 a month. And then they try to force you into training it's $17,000 to sit there with one of our team members and watch YouTube videos. Just a lot of gray hat, black hat kind of stuff. And what kills me about that is none of the things they do are relevant for most everybody we're talking about. Like literally almost every one of their features can be done as well or better for a fraction of the cost inside WordPress with the stack. And so I won't have any effect on them at all. Why? They're a multi-billion dollar company. It's like me driving my little dinghy around an oil rig and complaining about Exxon or something. I mean, I'll get like five minutes of attention and nothing else will change. But when people come to me and they ask me, well, do I, don't I need HubSpot? Or they're on HubSpot. I say, why are you on HubSpot? And what are you paying? 
And the worst part about it is for donations and charity. You know what I hear? HubSpot will take some like charitable organization. They'll say, oh, well, we give it for free or we give it for 90% off to a charitable organization. And they do. And then the people get into it and they realize, oh, but it's for the basic version of HubSpot. It's not for the one where I can do X, Y, and Z. But by then they're too far into it and they don't want to bother changing. And, and the whole thing just stinks. It stinks. And that's that. So, you know, listen. I grew up, I cut my teeth in the 90s on how Silicon Valley and all these companies in the tech space of California grew up. HubSpot was an East Coast company to my knowledge, but like, I'm an attorney, I'm a big boy. I don't begrudge them what they do, but I just can't stand it when companies are not honest. And I don't think HubSpot's being honest and their solutions, even now on the pricing page, you go to their pricing page, they have one, two, three, four, five, they have like nine different tools to choose from. And if you look at their thing, like for individuals, free tools are zero. Starter tools start at $30 a month if you pay monthly 50. But professional tools, how much do you think when you have a, a column, let's play the guessing game, free tools are zero. The starter tools, which is essential marketing sales service CMS, which means nothing for monthly. <laughs> That's where silent is there. <laughs> it's 50 a month, includes up to 1,000 contacts. What do you think after you get to 1,001 people, the cost goes up to from $50 a month? What do you think the next step is? Well, it should, I would have thought something between 100 and 150, but no, no, it's probably 500. Try $1,781 a month. <laughs> Go kiss your sister because th that is the trap that they're setting for people and for no good reason because the complexity and the way that those tools work. If you are so advanced that you're doing like these, you know, multi-object relational database things for your business, I say, great, keep using HubSpot. But nine out of 10 people are like, I just want a membership site where I sell access to stuff on a subscription. How can I do it? I'm like, WooCommerce, Fluent CRM, LaunchFlows, WP Fusion, you're done. And own it, control it, no cost of expanding your list to a million customers. And by the way, it's exhausting to me to discuss these topics. Why? Because there's such a strong amount of misinformation that when somebody searches, you have to overcome. Like not, not just the WordPress problem of like, I had a guy yesterday so smart and he's like, I thought, I thought that the WooCommerce was going to cost me 33% transactional fee on everything. I'm like, where are you getting that? He's like, I'm on wordpress.com slash WooCommerce. I'm like, oh my God. That's that new payment gateways, like, you know, jetpack nonsense. But he has no idea what it is. And then you have to overcome the marketing of the CRM companies. And I've not given up. I've taken a different tact. Spends 2023 is like, I'm just offering a solution that who cares that it's made on WordPress because the people I'm reaching are just looking for the solution. So like yourself, if you're a nonprofit and you need somebody who just wants to offer you the solution, the parts will come from this and that, and the CRM will come from maybe this or that, but you're not going to be locked into these problems because we know how to navigate it. Well, thanks for that. I thought we'd have a quick chat. And we're going to end it now, folks. We'll see you next week. Um, see you soon. Bye.